Good evening, everybody. Well, tonight we're going to take a look at prime factorization and the greatest common factor of polynomials. You should be familiar with prime factorization and how you find the factors of a number. What we'll be doing is using that information and taking it and showing you how we can find the greatest common factor of polynomials. You've learned up to this point how to multiply monomials. You've learned how to multiply polynomials. Well, the, just the same way that you learned how to multiply numbers and then break them apart, we're now going to learn how to break apart the polynomial. So with that said, let's get started. So we learned before how to multiply. So we gave you a, a monomial and we said multiply 5 times 3 times 6 and get the number 90. What we're going to learn tonight is how we take this piece of information and break it apart so we can find the parts that created that number 90. Now with numbers, that's pretty easy. You've already done this before. That's called prime factorization. And here we've taken the 60 and we divided it by 2 and got 2 times 30. We've taken the 30 and divided it by 2 and got 2 times 15. We've taken the 15 and divided it by 3 and got 3 times 5. There's no more ways that we can break this down. That's a prime number, a prime number, prime and prime. And so we just rewrite this 2 times 2, 2 squared, times 3, times 5. And if we go back and multiply that, that's the same as 4 times 3, which is 12, 12 times 5, which is 60. And that's how you find the prime factors of a number. <clears throat> and we're going to use that information to be able to do that with all the numbers, but then later on we're going to take that and take it into how we deal with monomials. But I want you to remember this. When you are factoring, you are trying to find out what are the p components that are multiplied against each other that will give me the number that I'm starting with, or the polynomial that I'm starting with. So let's practice here on how we find prime factorization. So 24 becomes 2 times 12, becomes 2 times 6, becomes 2 times 3. 1, 2, 3, 2 to the third, times 3. 60 becomes 2 times 30, 2 times 15, whoops, 3 times 5, and we end up with 2 squared times 3 times 5. Pretty straightforward. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and do 54. Break it down for me. Be prepared to bring to class tomorrow. Okay, I want to be able to see 54 broken down, part of your warm up tomorrow. Did you pause? Go ahead, pause. All right, good. All right. So, we have the greatest common factors and we broke them down. Now we're trying to find the greatest common factors of 24 and 60. What are the greatest common factors of these two? Well, we've found the prime factors. Well, the greatest common factors are the factors which are common to 24 and 60. So there's a 2 here, there's a 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, 2 here, 2 here. There's no more 2's on this side. There is a 3, there is a 3. No more 5. So these are the factors. We have 2 which is common, wrote the 2. 2 that is common, wrote the 2. 3 that is common, wrote the, the 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. So the greatest common factor of 24 and 60 is 12. And that's why it's so important to be able to break these down. Let's take another example here. 12 and 16. So first we're going to break it down. We have 2 times 6, 2 times 3. We have 2 times 8, 2 times 4, and 2 times 
too. Now obviously if you can do this quicker and you notice that the greatest common factor is 4, I want you to do that. But what I'm doing is showing you a method so that if you don't see the greatest common factor, you can find it. So we have a 2 and a 2. We have a 2 and a 2. We have nothing else in common. 2 times 2 is 4, so the GCF of 12, sorry, 12 and 16 is 4. Pretty straightforward. <coughs> and we'll have plenty of chance to practice that tomorrow. Okay, so what happens when I have a monomial and a monomial? Well, the first thing remains the same. We factor this out. We get 5 times 5, and we get 9 times 5. And then we get 3 times 3 times 5. Okay, so the GCF here, we have a 5. We have a 5. We have nothing in common. So the GCF of 25 and 45 is 5. And you most probably saw that. But what do I do here? Well, we could do this the long way, and I'm now going to show you the shortcut. C times C and C times C. I'm sorry, C times C times C. So what do we have in common here? We have a C and a C. We have a C and a C. And we don't have anything else in common. We have a D, and how, we, how many of these do we have? Well, we have D times D three times, and we have D times D times D three times. So times D times D. And in common again, one more time, times D. And then finally the W squared, so running out of room here. That's W times W, and that's W. So what do I have in common? I have one W. And then we can go back and pretty this up a little bit. C squared, D to the third, and W. And I want you to write that in your notes, because that obviously takes a long time. But you know, we've, we've written out and expanded and broken out the monomial so we can see what's been multiplied. But if we have to do that every time we're going to find the, the GCF, that's going to take us a while. So let's take a look at how we can do a shortcut with that. Okay, well the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the GCF of the coefficients. And again, we found that that is 5. But then, all we're going to do is look at the smallest exponent. What's the smallest exponent of C? Well, we have C squared c cubed and c squared. So the smallest one is c squared. What's the smallest exponent for d? Well, this is d cubed and this is d cubed. So we'll write d cubed. And what's the smallest one here? w and squared and w. And so then we just write it. 5 c squared d cubed w. 5, c squared, d cubed, and w. And so it's very easy to find the GCF of a monomial, as two sets of monomials, or however many monomials we're dealing with. Let's do this one. GCF of 10 and 25 is 5. Exponent on the b here is 4. Exponent on the b here is 5. And so that's that. Do we have a C here? Yes, we do. Do we have a C here? No. So we're always going to use the smallest. So the GCF of 10B to the 4th C and 25B to the 5th is 5B to the 4th. Hopefully you can see why we can't put C in here because C is not part of this family. All right, here we have a little bit of math. I've got 6 times 6. I got 3 times 2 and 3 times 2, and then over here, I'm going to move this 28 over here, I've got 7 times 4, and 2 times 2, 2 is in common, 2 is in common, so I have 4 is the GCF of 36 and 28. Now I come to the A, I have an A squared and an A to the 5th, choose the smallest, I have an e to the 6th and an e to the 4th. Choose the smallest. Pretty straightforward. 
All right. I want you to try these two. And I want you to bring me those answers to class tomorrow along with the first assignment that I gave you. So we'll call this number two and we'll call this number three. And go ahead and pause it and find the GCF. I will give you one clue. We have a three and a five. GCF of that is one. Okay? So we don't even have to write it. Okay. Moving on here. Now we have three things going on. Greatest common factor, 1842. We're going to have to do 9 times 2, 3 times 3 for 18. 42, we've got 2 times 21, and then 7 times 3. And then 54, we have 2 times 27, and then 3 times 9, and 3 times 3. So the GCF of all these, well, let's take a look. We have a 3, a 3, and a 3. So I can write 3. Um, we have a 2, a 2, and a 2. A 2, a 2, and a 2. So I can write 2. Anything else that's common with all of these. So the GCFs, GCF of this is 6. And let's clean this up just a little bit. So we say it's 6. J. Any J's in here? No. So I can't include that. E's. Any E's in here? No. Any Z's in all three of them. So the greatest common factor of the following expression is just 6. And then finally, your last assignment, I want you to go through and break this down. And your number four assignment is to tell me the GCF of this expression. I hope that's helped. We'll have plenty of time to practice this. We need to be able to do the tree method. We need to be able to take a look at whether the exponent or the variables included in all of the monomials. And if so, the lowest exponent is part of the GCF. Good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.